How can you improve your health and lifestyle without spending extra money? Let's find out. Welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, hi, my name is Sylvia and I'm a big city mom. I live, work and raise my family in New York City. And whenever I get some free time, I blog and vlog about health through diet, lifestyle and nutrition. A few years ago, I was diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis and I refused to take conventional treatments. I wanted to find my own answers and since I got myself into that condition, I figured I can get myself out of this condition without taking any drugs. And a few months ago, I was able to do just that through diet, lifestyle and nutrition. So if you are on this journey yourself, you should definitely subscribe, hit that notification bell and I'll get started with today's video. When it comes to health and lifestyle and nutrition, Oftentimes people start talking about supplementation with vitamins, maybe antioxidants these days. Collagen supplements are very popular. But there is a lot that you can do that doesn't cost you any money. In fact, it can save you money that will improve your health by a lot. So let's have a look at what these things are. Let's start with the most obvious one and that's sugar. Cut it all out. This will be a huge saving to your budget, but also your body will be thankful to you, especially your gut microbiome. These days, sugar is everywhere and in everything, especially if you are out and about in the city and you want to grab a snack, it will be almost always something that is sweet and sugary. These days, pumpkin spice latte with some croissant, maybe. Cut it all out, your body will be thankful to you and your wallet as well. And while we are talking about sugar, let's tackle carbohydrates. Here in the Western world, we eat way too much carbohydrates. It could be 150 grams, 200, 300, sometimes even four and 500. This is way too much. Just to give you an idea, if you are following a low carb diet, you will typically eat somewhere between 25 to 50 grams of carbohydrates a day, and this will exclude starchy ones. So for example, things like potatoes or pasta or rice is a no-go on the low carb diet. And when it comes to sugar consumption, you should be aiming for 25 grams of sugar a day from everything that you eat. And that would include also things like potatoes or pasta, because even if they don't have added sugar or sugar listed on them as a, a nutrient, in the end, your body will convert that starch to glucose anyway, and it will raise your blood sugars. If you are, for example, on the ketogenic diet, 80% of your calories will come from fat, 15% from proteins, and just 5% from carbohydrates. So if you are just starting this journey, even if you get your carbohydrate consumption down to 80 grams in the beginning, you will be way ahead and you will start noticing within a few weeks that your body is doing a lot better and that you feel a lot better as well. Let's talk about food some more. Okay, next one up, processed foods. They need to go as well. And they're not as expensive, but if you buy a lot of it, it can get expensive. I know it's not easy because the supermarket shelves are filled with boxes, tins, cans, packages, bags of food that was in one shape or another processed. Now the good rule of thumb is if it has more than five ingredients and a list of preservatives you cannot pronounce or don't know what they mean, don't buy it. And you will save yourself a lot of time too, because your trip to the supermarket will be now butcher and produce section and you are out. And you can save some money with it as well. And your body within just a few weeks will be really thankful to you. And next one on my list is alcohol. I don't think there's anybody that will argue that alcohol is actually good for you, although I know there are enthusiasts of wine talking about the French paradox and the Reservatrol in the wine, I know, but I think you can get Reservatrol and other antioxidants other ways without having to consume alcohol because alcohol alone has no benefits to your body. 
and especially if you are into the ketogenic diet it will kick you out of ketosis really quickly sure if you want to consume alcohol as a celebration on a rare occasion i don't see a problem with that but if the consumption happens weekly or every couple of days way too much in new york city alcoholic drinks are really expensive so you're not only not doing yourself a favor as far as your health goes but your wallet will suffer as well so give up on the alcohol before you buy any supplement reduce or eliminate your tea and coffee consumption i know this might be a hard one for many of you especially that what is it 80 percent of us adults consume coffee on the regular basis now i had to give up coffee because of my autoimmunity and i did that also with tea and i cannot tell you how much better i felt my quality of sleep improved my joint pain went away and i overall feel more energetic and my energy is a lot more sustained throughout the day without those ups and downs and i tried to reintroduce tea again and in fact, I was feeling worse after drinking tea than drinking coffee. And to be specific, I used to drink uh, black tea a lot and I would typically drink it with some uh, lemon in it, no sugar. And still, when I was just bringing back tea with some lemon, my rheumatoid arthritis symptoms came back. And when I tried with coffee, I didn't enjoy the taste anymore, but I didn't have the same flare up like I got after uh, introducing tea back so have a look at that if you drink like i did two coffees a day and 10 to 15 cups of black tea a day maybe cut it down another one that doesn't cost you anything but has tremendous benefits and that is a good night's sleep i cannot tell you how important a good night's sleep is for your overall health I aim for eight hours and the overall consensus is that an adult should be getting anywhere between seven to nine hours. I typically go to bed between nine, 9.30 till five, 5.30. I like to go to sleep early and wake up early, but you should definitely listen to your body. Just try different things and find out what your natural preference is and follow it as consistently as you can. Good night sleep has tremendous importance to all aspects of your health it affects your mood your ability to concentrate your ability to make decisions you will feel irritable and in a bad mood if you are sleep deprived your immune system will go down if you are running on the sleep deficit you will have hard time losing weight and you will have a lot more cravings for foods that are unhealthy any way you slice it sleep is critical to your overall health it doesn't matter how much you diet, how much you exercise, or how much you supplement if you don't have a good night's sleep. And finally, let's talk about exercise. You don't have to be a fitness fanatic spending seven days a week in the gym. You can start really small without a gym membership. Even if you can start by doing walks 20 minutes or 40 minutes a day, get off the subway a few steps earlier and walk that alone will have health benefits also if you can get a stand-up desk at your office if you have an office job that too will have tremendous benefits to your health we are naturally made to stand and walk and not to sit for eight or ten hours a day so see if you can make those changes, they don't cost a lot and you will start seeing benefits really quickly. All right, so these are my strategies that don't require any extra money, but they will definitely improve your overall health. Please share it with anybody that is interested in improving their health. It doesn't cost any money. Like, subscribe, comment down below, and I will see you in my next one. Bye.